In the following video, I'm going to talk about some great upgrades that I made to my job site saw cart. If you haven't seen how I made this cart, that video is right up here. You might want to go back and look at that. But I want to say that I adapted these additional pieces and upgrades from somebody who had a cart that was totally different from mine. So even if you don't have my particular rolling job site saw cart, you can still do these and I would encourage you to watch this video because these are great additions. Secondarily, about three quarters of the way through the video, I'll show you a really neat router jig that I made to cut these just perfectly, these channels in the outfeed table. It worked really well. So I hope you stay tuned and now on to the video. Hey everybody, Ray here. Today I'm going to talk about a set of upgrades that I want to do to my portable table saw. I'm going to put a new outfeed table on here. I'm going to put a new side wing on here. I'm going to make the base wider so I don't have to worry about tipping and rocking. It's going to be more stable. If you want to see how I do this, I want to take you through it step by step. So stick around. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit me with that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So let me give you a quick overview as to why I want to make these updates. Because really, this little saw cart works fairly efficiently right now. Well, let's talk about the outfeed table first. Originally, this outfeed table had cantilevered legs coming down this way. But then I found that when I got any weight out here, the, the saw would, would want to tip this way. Originally, what I did was I just counterbalanced it with a couple of blocks in the front here, but that wasn't very good. So then what I did was I added this fold-down set of legs here. So these just fold down and they go like that. Now, one thing I have found is that when I bring this leg up here, if I'm not careful, I'll get my finger stuck in there and that hurts like crazy. And when I built this, I thought it was going to be temporary, and apparently it is, um, and I just used some one by 2 So this isn't even really that sturdy, although it works pretty well. The other thing is that my side wing here, I slide a piece of board under here and keep this side wing up, but I've noticed that there's a couple of bumps showing through here because I almost came through with the screws. So we're going to just replace that. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is I'm going to increase the length under here where I can put my wheels. So I'm going to come out about six inches here and then I will remount the wheels under here and then what that will do is I can eliminate these legs, put a different style hinge in here and I won't have that tipping problem if it works the way I think it will. So that's what we're going to be working on. Now to make my new side wing and outfeed table, I bought a piece of 24 by 48 melamine from Lowe's. And the existing side wing table is 10 inches. But the hinge that I bought that I can retract like that is 12 inches. So the new wing will be 12 inches. By the way, this is exactly why I put this side wing on here because I can now cut something that's 48 inches wide a little bit more safely. So I'm going to go ahead and cut 12 inches off of this. So what I was able to do with these two hinges is to, I just first measured down the depth of my melamine board here and then kind of established approximately where I would want these hinges to be. And then I put clamps to hold them in place. Then I could place my melamine board on there and I could move that up and down with these clamps to get it to where it was level and it would pass right across there. Now what I found is that this side here dropped down a little bit on me um, when I was putting it together. So I'll shim this up just a little bit. The other thing that I've found is if I look across here all the way to the end, then what I find is that it definitely 
drops down at the end. It doesn't go up at, at a perfect 90 degree angle and stay there. So I'll have to shim this side up a little bit too um, to make sure that it stays flat all the way across. But other than that, this installation went fairly quickly and easily. So to get this perfectly level with the top of my saw here, uh, what I had to do was just put a sliver, I mean this is almost paper thin shim up here and then where it kind of sloped back on this hinge for some reason I just put a few couple of pieces of double sided tape. Now if I fit that place, piece in place there um, you might be able to see that it's now nice and flat and square all the way across from the table to the melamine board. And a second way to check that is to just sliding this over here and it just slides very nicely from top to top without moving up or down. Okay, this side wing here worked out great. It really wasn't too difficult. Uh, I just had to get all the screws into the uh, bottom here to hold the piece and then now just flip it down out of the way flip it up when I need it that's easier to use than my old one was I love it now before we move forward with putting our new outfeed table on the back I needed to fix the fact that if I don't have legs under that outfeed table when I had it like that before, it tended to be a little bit too tippy if I got something too heavy out on the outfield, outfeed table. So to resolve that, I've gotten some new wheels, I've gotten some larger casters, and I'm going to connect this 2x4 to the cabinet base. And I've extended this 2x4 out 7 inches beyond the dimensions of the cabinet base, which should now give it 7 more inches this way, so it hopefully will not want to tip. If it still feels a little tippy, I'm putting my holes in here such that I can still slide it back two more inches and hopefully resolve that problem. But I think the way I've designed it here, giving it 27 inches, should be just fine. I want these screws to go in as straight as possible, so I'm going to go ahead and put the holes through here on this 2x4 with my drill press. going to connect these 2x4s with some 2-inch uh, wood screws. I don't think I need to go into the base of the cabinet very deep because all the weight is up against the base. So We'll put the wheels on the base here with some 2.5-inch screws. These 2.5-inch screws will actually go through the 2x4 and into the base. So these wheels will be well supported. Alright, these new wheels are working great. One of the reasons I wanted larger wheels was occasionally I like to roll this outside of my garage and there's kind of a bump going out of there and those small wheels didn't handle that very well. These larger casters will handle it much better and of course they all have brakes so I can lock this thing in when I'm ready to work on it. Now as we think about how we're going to put our outfeed table on here, there's a couple of things we have to take into consideration. One is that this will be the hinge that will fit up against the back of the saw. And then it will open and close like that. Now, the hinge needs to be able to go fit such that the melamine board will fit on top of that and be level with the top of my saw table. So, we need to be able to move this up and down on whatever brace that we choose to use. The second consideration is that it has to be far enough out that the fence will move back and forth freely and clear this bracket. So in order to achieve that, what I've done is I've cut three pieces of board here. The first one will be the piece that will connect to 
the back of the saw and make sure it stays out of the way of this cog here when it goes back and forth. The second piece will come up beyond that cog but just below where my fence needs to slide back and forth. Then I will add a third piece that will go outside of that fence. So my fence can now freely go back and forth this way without hitting any of my support structure for my hinges. As so often happens with woodworking, as I'm putting this together, I'm feeling a little differently about it. Originally I was going to put this third piece on here and then I would attach the bracket to that. But as I started playing around with this, what I did was I put this board sitting on the top of my table saw with a couple of bricks on it to hold it still. So then I would know that if my bracket sat here and my melamine sat there, then if I brought it up to that board, I would get that to be level with the top of my saw. And as I was doing that, I noticed that, you know, I'm pretty close to be able to just attach this right to this second board here. And if need be, I can shim it a little bit across the top of my hinge bracket here. And that actually would be better than having another piece sticking out this way, which is going to force my table to be even longer and maybe force some of that tippiness. So we're going to just go with the two boards here and then I'll figure it out. When I figured out exactly where I wanted my melamine piece to be as far as being level with the top of the tabletop saw, then the next step was I came in here with a square to make sure that the hinges were square with the melamine before I mounted them so when I take them up and down they won't bind. So now they're square. I've got them held by two clamps. I can go ahead and put in the screws on this part of the hinge. So we now have our, our hinges connected here. So they're ready to go. And if we take our little test piece of melamine here and we set it on the hinge and I slide the board off the saw table, you can see that it very freely goes across the top of that. In fact, this needs to be shimmed up just a skosh to make it perfectly level. And that's fine. That's really to plan because you can't sand melamine down. If this was too high and the wood was hitting it, the only other option is to actually lower this bracket, and that's a whole lot of work. So we'll just put a very thin shim under here and make sure that the board will slide and just be a little bit closer than it is right now, but this is pretty perfect as it stands. So we cut our board to the size that we wanted, and we mounted it to the top of the hinge brackets from underneath with the screws. We had to shim it up a little bit on this side and a little bit more on this side such that when you would slide a board off the top of the table, it would go right across here and stay level all the way down. Now the next thing we have to do is cut a groove in here for the slot where the miter bar will fit for my crosscut sled. So there's two things I could do. One is I just pushed my sled out to the point where it hit the board and I could mark on either side of that bar. Now I know where that bar needs to be and how wide it needs to be. Then I could take my sled and slide it up enough that I know that my fence on my cross cut sled gets past my saw blade. Now I know how deep I need to go this way with the groove because that groove doesn't have to pass all the way down here. It would just structurally weaken the outfeed table. So now we're going, to carry, we're going to carry our lines through here so I know exactly where to run my router and then we're going to route out these two additional channels. In order to make sure that I routed my channel nice and straight, I drew a box around where I wanted the channel to be. That's the width of the channel. Then I just drew an X in that box. So I knew that where the two lines intersected here, that was the exact center. Once I knew where the center was, then I could just take my 
combination square and set it on that center. And then I could draw a couple of lines on each side here. Now I'll show you how this is going to come in handy. So I've got a great little router jig here that I learned how to make from a channel called uh, 3x3 Custom. Uh, Tamara, I believe, is her name. And she does some really good woodworking and kind of does it with a lot of simple tools like I do. So I really appreciate her channel. But the way this works is if you line the edge of this board up with the center line that you need to route and clamp it down, you'll be able to put your router against this and run it down the edge of your jig here and it will be perfectly centered where you want it to be. I'll show you how that works. Now once you have this edge here of this little jig on the center line of the channel that you want to cut, you, flip, you just flip that piece back up here. Because what you've done is you've built this jig such that now when you put your router against this inside board here, it is perfectly centered along that uh, channel that you want to cut. Now to get the depth that I want, I will actually make two passes with this router, but there's no need for you to keep watching me route this thing out. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Our channel came out very neatly cut here because of that jig that I used. And now our cross-cut sled will slide up as far as it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and do this second channel here while I've got my router out, and then we'll move forward with the next step. So after I completed routing both of these channels in the outfeed table, I took my router and I put a chamfer bit on it, which is just a beveled bit. And I went around the outside and just beveled off all the sharp edges. If you don't have a, a router to do that, um, you could just use sandpaper, but the router is pretty critical in terms of putting these channels in. Now also, one of the things that I wanted to mention was, if you recall, when I set out to upgrade this stand, one of the things I wanted to do was to have an outfeed table that I could put up without having legs underneath it, and I wanted it to be stable so it wouldn't tip. Well, by moving the legs out seven inches by putting those two by fours under the frame and then putting the wheels on it, it completely eliminated any instability. I've got three solid concrete blocks on here that must weigh five pounds a piece. So I've got 15 pounds out here on the end of the outfeed table. And you can tell that there is no tippiness at all, even when I push down on it. I wish I could express to you just how pleased I am with the way this little project turned out. You know, making my outfeed table better and making sure that my saw wasn't tippy when I put weight on it, adding this side wing, all these things are going to pay massive dividends in the future because this table saw is one of my most frequently used tools. I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, hit me with that thumbs up. If you would, I'd appreciate it, and you might want to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.